I've been doing this a long time. Astrophotography, that is. Deep sky, wide field, nightscapes, I love it all. I'm definitely not the best astro imager out there, but I've taken a few beauties, and I know what I like, and I know what I don't. Astrophotography is more than just the pictures you take. It's about an overall positive experience along the way. I don't like seeing people quit because they're frustrated or confused. It doesn't have to be that way. In this video, I'm going to take a picture of one of the most stunning deep sky objects in the night sky using an ultra portable, practical, and affordable deep sky setup. If you're looking to build your first deep sky astrophotography rig, I think you'll find this video especially useful. When I started this journey 11 years ago, I was new to the idea of star trackers and long exposure photography. The star tracker or the equatorial mount is the most important part of your entire deep sky setup. The one you see on my setup right here is the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i, and this allows me to take long exposure, three minute exposures with sharp stars consistently at this focal length. This tracker is easy to transport, polar align, and operate. Some of the larger telescope mounts can't say that. It has a few quirks, of course, but the main thing is to spend time really dialing in the polar alignment of the mount with the celestial pole. There are plenty of apps for your phone and tutorials online to help you through this process, and once you get it, it'll take you less than a minute each time. The balance of your rig is crucial too, and the Star Adventure here has a max payload capacity of 11 pounds. So keep it light and use the included counterweight to keep everything nice and balanced. After that, it's just a matter of locating your deep sky object in space and letting this little guy run. Of course, your tripod needs to be ultra stable for your star tracker to operate properly. Once you've experienced a quality tripod that's easy to travel with and never lets you down, it's hard to go back. There are cheaper models than the Radiant Carbon Fiber Quick Release tripod you see here, but this one is my all-time favorite, hands down. If you're like me and skimped out on the quality of your tripod for a little too long, do yourself a favor and pick up one that will be the last one you ever buy. This one is available in a package with the Star Adventure for a reason. That quick release plate is a lifesaver during polar alignment. Now here's where people can get lost. The night sky is full of amazing deep sky wonders, often very dim. So without a go-to equatorial telescope mount that knows where everything is, how are you supposed to find them? Well, with a manual star tracker like this one, a wide field optical instrument is your best friend. Not only does this make the tracking more forgiving, but it's a lot easier to find deep sky objects too. You can use your DSLR camera's magical long exposure night vision powers to reveal objects in the night sky. That's right, you only need to know a rough idea of the object's location, and then you can take some test exposures and fine tune it from there. It's a beautiful thing. The telescope here, or is it a lens? Doesn't matter. It's the TPO 180. As the name suggests, it shoots at a focal length of 180 millimeters at f4.9. Its tiny 50 millimeter aperture does a surprisingly good job at collecting photons. 180 millimeters is a great focal length for deep sky astrophotography. It's ultra wide field for sure, so most galaxies and planets are out of the question. But if you're into rich star fields and sprawling nebulae, this is what you want. The camera is a basic DSLR. This is a Canon Rebel T7. It's bone stock, it's affordable, and it's all you need to get started in astrophotography. The camera isn't modified for astrophotography or anything, and that's not something you need to do right away to enjoy the hobby. This is an entry-level crop sensor DSLR camera, and it's capable of producing amazing astro images. If you're serious about deep sky, chances are you'll likely upgrade to a dedicated astronomy camera in the future, but trust me, there will always be a reason to run this one as well. I use a standard T-ring to attach the camera to the telescope, and inside there I have a universal astro clip-in light pollution filter. It helps me pretend that my backyard isn't a light polluted mess. You won't have any trouble with backspacing with this system and your DSLR camera. Just use the included extension tubes 
and dial back that helical focuser until you can focus on a bright star or a tree during the day. For this telescope to perform best in terms of color correction, you'll really wanna dial in that focus. And I'll come back to this in a minute. One thing you can do to make your life easier, at least when you're starting out, is to stick to the brighter deep sky objects. The ultra dim ones are beautiful and exciting, that's for sure, but they may require a lot of exposure time, specialized filters, and even darker skies. Oh, before I forget, if you're a beginner astrophotographer and you're starting out under a Bortle 4 sky or better, that's just not fair. You have a massive advantage over most of us and you can pretty well forget about using a light pollution filter. Why are you still wearing your vest? I wanted to wear all my cut stuff at once. This video was sponsored by Cuts Clothing, a brand dedicated to outfitting the world's most ambitious people. And me. I'm ambitious, right Ash? Yeah. I feel like I'm more determined than ambitious. Is that the same thing? Cuts has expanded their product line like crazy to include hats and joggers and outerwear. And yes, for those paying attention, Gabe came through with my new vest and not a minute too soon either. It's freezing out there. If you're an ambitious fella and you appreciate fresh, minimalist clothing that you can wear in almost any situation, head over to the Cuts website and I'm sure you'll find something. You can use the link in the description to support me and what I do and even get 15% off your next order. Thank you to the team at Cuts for sponsoring this video and I can't wait to visit the HQ next year. Okay, it's time to get started on our target, the beautiful, the bright fan favorite known as the Pleiades Star Cluster. This object has the benefit of being super bright and easy to find, and it has multiple bright stars within it that you can use as an aid to help you focus on. In fact, they're so bright, you may actually end up having to deal with some reflection issues, but that's not too much of a pain depending on where they land. Check out my section on repairing things like this in my image processing guide that I've linked below. The focuser on the TPL 180 is really nice. There's a sweet spot you need to get to to produce chromatic aberration free images and it sits somewhere between purple and green if you know what I mean. You'll find it. Framing and focusing the Pleiades is a real treat. Unlike most objects, you're able to see the object in your camera's live view as long as you've got that ISO cranked and your exposure time is set to 30 seconds or bulb. There are two more accessories that I like to use at this point that are very cheap and easy to use. The first is a simple remote shutter release cable to set a series of long exposure images and the second is a small USB powered dew heater band. You can use a small battery charger pack to power the dew heater and everything is still ultra portable and grab and go. I've centered the Pleiades star cluster in the frame, focused it up perfectly, and now I'm going to take as many two minute exposures as I can here in my backyard. The one constant in this hobby, and I really mean the only one constant, is that more exposure time always makes your picture better. Seriously, don't hop around collecting an hour here, an hour there. Stick to one deep sky object for an entire night, or better yet, multiple nights. The kit I've shown tonight isn't the only way to go about this, but it's about as good as an example as I can provide for someone that wants to get started in deep sky. This is the exact setup I would have recommended to 26 year old Trevor. This is the type of kit you can learn on and get some incredible results. You won't hit a wall of frustration that wants to make you give up astro for good because it focuses on the basics of deep sky imaging. There's no way around it. If you don't take care of the fundamentals like polar alignment, you're gonna have a rough go no matter which setup you use. This kit is so painless and straightforward to use that I trust it not to ruin your first astrophotography experience. Get your tracker polar aligned, your telescope focused, and pointed at that hazy patch of stars in the constellation Taurus. You may be surprised at the results.
I'm ambitious, right, Ash? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you're going to say? I don't know. That just didn't seem like an honest answer. Sure. I don't, what am I supposed to say? Do you actually think I am? Ambitious? Yeah. Sure. 